Welcome to numerical methods. So we are still in our section on random number generation. Yeah, having started with the uniform distributed random numbers, we now moved to a section generating random number sequences of other distributions. What I like to do now is uh, acceptance rejection sampling. And I actually, I like this section uh, for two reasons. First, it's a nice, interesting method. Yeah, It's not so often used in, in practice. That's maybe because the inversion of the distribution function is such a powerful method. But you can also get a lot of intuition from this methods than for other method, like for example, weighted Monte Carlo. Yeah, so I have later a small uh, bridge. Yeah, that you can understand weighted Monte Carlo by understanding exception acceptance rejection sampling. So, what's the situation here? So, I like to generate again an F distributed sequence. So, we like to generate an F distributed sequence X i. But I'm in the situation where I do not know the inversion of the distribution function. However, I do know how to generate a sequence yi that is g distributed and has a certain relation to f and this relation to f is that c times the density of the g distribution so g prime is larger or equal the density of f So I have to know the density of F. But this is a, a situation, for example, we have for the normal distribution. Yeah? For the normal distribution, you do not know the distribution function. You do not know the F inverse. Uh, actually, we have to say we know it up to machine precision. Uh, no, but in theory, you don't know it. But you know the density, Yeah, 1 divided by square root of 2 P exponential minus x square half, you know the density in a nice formula, and maybe you can find now um, a distribution function, a sequence uh, that is g distribution, c, g distributed, where you know the where you know the density g two, and you have this relation. Yeah, you have a, you have a density function. Just consider the integral. The integral of the density is the probability. Yeah, um, So the constant will be larger than one. So I make the left side a little bit larger. But you will see this later. OK. Yeah, let's have a look at this method. Yeah, So here it is. So this looks complicated. But actually, it's not so complicated what's going on there. So what I need is I need a two-dimensional random number sequence. And this sequence is uj in the first component. Yeah, so a sampling of the random variable u, the random variable u having unit uniform distribution on 0, 1. And I have yj in the second component, a sampling of the random variable y. So at the random variable y having distribution function G. So this is my G distributed sequence. Yeah. Sampling uniforms, we know how to do it. Additional assumption, there is another sequence Y having distribution G and the two should be independent. Yeah. So U and Y are independent. So I have a two-dimensional sequence running here and u is uniform, y is g distributed. I denote the densities here by the 
little f being the density of the f distributed random variable and little g being the density of the g distributed random variable. My condition is that there should be a constant larger than zero. We will see later that the constant is actually larger than one. Uh, there should be a constant larger than zero such that for all x, the density of f, yeah, so little f, is less or equal c times the density of g, yeah, so the little g. So here is a small example on this. Okay. So you have, for example, some density, the density of the function that you would like to to sample yeah, of the random variable that you would like to sample. This is the F. You know some other sequence. This is my G distributed sequence. Unfortunately for this other sequence, the density is not dominated or uh, dominating the density F at all points, but you see that you have some kind of domination asymptotically. So if you have some domination asymptotically, then you can find a constant uh, larger than one that shifts this density a little bit up. So C times G, and this is just C times G here, it's scaling up, lies above F. So I need this condition. Then the sequence defined in the following way is F distributed. So I have my sequence Y, and now I take X to be equal the element Y, but only under a certain condition. So you see XI is YKI. So I do not take all elements from the sequence y. So which elements do I take? So ki is the minimum of, okay, the first part looks complicated, but it's actually trivial. j larger than ki minus one just means that my, my, my indices k should be increasing. Yeah. So this here just means takes take the next index. Take the next index fulfilling this condition. So take the next index fulfilling this condition. And now my condition is that the uniform sampled uj is less or equal f of yj divided by c times g of yj. So this is some kind of filtering, yeah? And just to make it complete, I start here initializing k0 to be 0, yeah? So that I have something meaningful here. I, my indices start start in 1. So j larger than 0, take, take the next index. So it means that if this condition here is fulfilled, I take the y to be my x, Otherwise, I skip it. Good. So in other words, we have here this pictures, the algorithm to sample a sequence of X by this acceptance rejection method is to sample our pairs uniform U, G distributed Y, and rejecting the points as long as this condition is violated, so as long as u is larger than f of y divided by c times g of y. So if you have this little picture, this is my uniform sequence u, this is my independent g distributed sequence y, then I look at the condition sequence, yeah, so you Check, for example, plug this point here and this point in the condition and check it. Yeah? The condition is violated, so you skip this point. Yeah? You do this again, 
check the condition, it's violated, you do it again, check the condition, it's fulfilled, and you take this guy as your first point for the sequence X. So this is some filtering method, and of course, uh, to have an efficient method, you should have a high acceptance rate. You should not throw away too many points. Yeah, We will discuss this, uh, because you see that you have to generate two random variables here, two random numbers, and then you throw two random numbers away if this guy is uh, rejected. But random number generation yeah, is usually quite fast. Yeah? So yeah, maybe if you reject half the points, yeah, you have to generate four times the numbers, always two, and half the points are rejected. But random number generation is maybe fast. Yeah, let's prove the method. Yeah, I I do I like to do the proofs if the proofs provide further insights to us, and this proof provides a little bit more insight because we first note that this here is our condition. The probability that u is less than f of y divided by c times g of y. Uh, so these are now plugged in the random variables. Yeah. So this is the set of all omegas where u of omega is less or equal f of y omega divided by c g of y omega. And then the probability, yeah, the measure of this set. So the probability that our point is accepted This is equal to one divided by C. Okay, how do we see this? Um, the general trick is that if you have a probability of something where you have two random variables here inside, yeah, so the probability is actually the integral over the density, and this corresponds to a two dimensional integral, yeah, because you have two arguments, u and y, uh, there is a nice trick to say to condition yeah, on one variable. So this corresponds, if it is a two-dimensional integral, to condition on one to just calculate the one-dimensional integral uh, for a fixed y, for example, and then integrate the one-dimensional integral. And we now do this trick. So I write here my condition to accept the point under the condition that I have sampled a specific little y. Yeah? So the conditional probability that I know uh, that I have sampled a given y. Okay, this means that conditioning, you just plug in the little y for the capital Y. Yeah? So this is what you would do in your two-dimensional integral. You just fix the variable little y. And now you have that u is uniform. Okay, u is uniform. What I have on the left-hand side is the distribution function, the probability that u stays below some given constant. The distribution function of the uniform distribution, we have seen that last time, is just the identity. So this is just here, this um, expression. This is just f of y divided by c times g of y. So the conditional probability to accept the point is f of y divided by c times g of y. And now I can calculate the unconditional probability of my acceptance condition by just integrating. So now I just integrate here my partial integral with respect to y. So I just multiply with the density g of y dy. So I plug this guy here in. So the probability of this is f of y divided by c times g of y. Yeah, so this guy is plugged in here. And you see that the g is canceling. And you just have integral over f, the density f, 
multiplied with one divided by C dy integral over the density is one. So I have a one divided by C. Okay, so this is a nice result. One divided by C is the probability to accept the point. And if you go back to our picture, you see that this then tells you a little bit that you should keep here the C small. Huh? So try to find the smallest C because if you make C larger, one divided by C is the probability to accept the point. Yeah? So you will reject more and more points. Yeah? So find the smallest hull yeah, that you can lie on top of the density F. I like to prove that the sequence X has distribution function F. So let's do this. So the distribution function of a random variable is starting here on the left side. The probability that x is below little x. Okay, and I would like to get that this is equal to capital F of x. So for this, let's plug in the definition of the sequence. So what you have here is in mathematical terms, what this sequence does. So because what the sequence does is that the capital X is equal to the Y, is equal to the Y, conditional to my criteria is fulfilled, so u is less or equal f of y divided by c times g of y. So this is the definition of the sequence, and this should be less or equal than x. Yeah, now I can use again here my definition of the conditional probability. Yeah, so p a condition b is p a intersected b divided by P of B. So I use this now for these two sets. So I have the probability that Y is less or equal X intersected with the set on which I accept the point. Now divided by the probability of accepting the point. And we do know that the probability of accepting the point is our one divided by C. So the divided by one divided by C gives me a C in front and I just get again the probability of these intersections, the intersection of Y is less than X and I accept the point. I do now the same trick again. I replace the Y with a set. So I'm conditioning to a fixed variable Z and integrate over the set. So this is integrate G of Z DZ. Yeah. So this is writing your two-dimensional integral as, yeah, uh, a one-dimensional integral of a one-dimensional integral. Uh, actually, maybe here there is a remark that uh, this is possible because the two are independent, yeah? So u and y are independent. So otherwise you would have a joint density, yeah? Some h of, for example, u and y. So you have this product structure. Yeah, now you have under the integral, this is an integral over z. I have under the integral the probability that z is less or equal x. Okay, this is like an indicator function. So I can replace this condition by just integrating up to x. Yeah, so this is the integral from minus infinity up to x. And here you have, again, a uniform, the probability of a uniform distributed random variable 
being less or equal some given constant, this gives you just this given given constant. Okay, and now you see that the G is canceling here, the C is canceling, and you just have integrate from minus infinity to little x f of z. This is the distribution function f. So x has distribution function f. Okay, so very nice uh, method. And uh, also we have some interpretation here. Yeah, so we have that the constant c is the probability to or say one divided by, so we have the one divided by C is the probability to accept the point. Yeah, so we choose C larger equal one, but uh, as small as possible. The limit case where C is, for example, equal to one, yeah, is the case where the density F and G are the same. Yeah, F is less or equal F. Yeah, this means then that you know how to, to sample f. And then this means that you accept every point, yeah, because this here is then just f divided by f. This, this is just one. The sequence y is then the sequence x. Here is a small remark, yeah, that also comes a little bit more from the practical side. If you use this method now in coding, yeah, and uh, this is uh, an interesting subtle thing. Um, you have here the two densities and often densities depend on parameters. A classical application here for this method is that F is the normal distribution. So the little f could be depending on mu and sigma, for example, and G is a double or um, a mirrored exponential distribution or an exponential distribution. So if G is an exponential distribution, then you have a parameter lambda. So these guys could have parameters. So when using this method, it's a bit important that your density is your function should not depend on some model parameter, say for example, theta, which you will later vary. Yeah, so which you will maybe change. Yeah, maybe you like to analyze how your result depends on the mean mu or the uh, standard deviation sigma. Uh, in that case, try to use the method with the standardized distribution, for example, standard normal, and try to apply the parameter later. Yeah, you can use a standard normal and just scale it with some parameter. This is always better. Because if you have a parameter inside here, the f and the g, it may happen that your sequence becomes discontinuous. Yeah, in which sense? So, for example, look at this case here where you have that the ui is less or equal the f, say, of your parameter theta, theta zero, of yi divided by c times g of yi. And then if you make a small epsilon change to this parameter, suddenly the ui becomes larger. Yeah, So you jump to the other side. So you made the small epsilon. And this can happen. And what this means is that the point is accepted for the first parameter and it is rejected for the other one. So you have that in a discontinuous sense, a point is suddenly removed or added to the sequence. Now you think, okay, this, this doesn't matter because if I use 10,000 yeah, or 1 million sample points, yeah, it is a one divided by 10,000. Yeah, so I have replaced one sample point yeah, or a one divided by 1 million change to my result, yeah, but still it is discontinuous change. And now comes the second subtle issue. If you now use this sequence in your algorithm that generates a two-dimensional vector from a one-dimensional, yeah, so our random number generator from 1D algorithm, then this means that you suddenly, when you distribute one, two, three, four, five, six, and now the number three is missing, you suddenly distribute one, two, 
four, five, yeah, six, seven. And you see that the sequence becomes scrambled after that point. So this is like you would use a completely different sequence. Yeah. So if this sequence is used to sample multidimensional random variable, the result is then maybe similar to changing the whole sequence just by a small epsilon change to a parameter. And this is a very undesired effect. Yeah, you suddenly get a, a different Monte Carlo error. So you you have a jump in the order of magnitude of the Monte Carlo error just by having a small change to do to the parameter. So this is an important tip. Uh, keep such things yeah out of your algorithm to make it uh, smooth. So of course we can combine the method acceptance rejection sampling with the inverse distribution function method. So what we do now is we had in the previous setup our sequence ui yi. Okay. And the yi should be g distributed. So what I will do now is I sample another uniform vi and I apply now the inversion of the distribution function. So I apply a G inverse to this. Yeah, this is a little bit nice, yeah, because before we had a uniform and a G distributed random variable. And now I just have two uniforms, the UI and the VI. I sample a two-dimensional uniform sequence. So zero, one to the power of two and I have my acceptance rejection method to generate a one-dimensional F-distributed method. So I assume in addition that I know the inverse of the distribution function G in closed form, or I have a sufficiently accurate approximation. And now I set my YJ to be the G inverse of my uniform BJ. Yeah, so I assume that I generate a second independent uniform sequence. So the algorithm looks like that. Given a two-dimensional uniform sequence sampling UV on zero one, UV independent, then I generate xi is g inverse of my uniform vki, where the index ki is such that the uj is less or equal f g inverse vj divided by c times g, g inverse vj. Okay, so this is just combining now my acceptance rejection method with the inverse of the distribution function. I have a nice example where I will use this when we sample the normal distribution. No, that's really a very nice example. We can use this method to sample the normal distribution. But before we do this, let's have another example for today. Let's sample the inhomogeneous exponential distribution. So without this trick that we did previously, the trick that we assume a piecewise constant intensity function lambda. Okay, so here is the acceptance rejection method for the inhomogeneous exponential distribution. Uh, so just recall inhomogeneous exponential distribution means that the probability to default before time little t is one minus exponential minus integral from zero to t lambda of SDS. I have a function lambda given. 
So I define first some lambda min. Lambda min is the minimum of my function lambda. So you see this guy here. Okay. Then if you make here the lambda smaller, so if you replace lambda of s with lambda min, so you move now from integrating this function to integrating a constant, then you make the expression larger, yeah, because this is here an exponential minus, yeah. So if you make this guy smaller, everything goes closer to one, yeah. So if you make this guy smaller and replace it by lambda min, so then you have that the density. So this here is my density f function becomes larger. So I replace this here by lambda min. So this is the first step where I just replace the lambda in the integral by lambda min. Um, then I can write this as the function g, which I have here. if I just multiply with lambda of t and divide by lambda min. Yeah? So you see, I have here a lambda min exponential minus lambda min t. Yeah, this here is my density of the homogeneous exponential distribution. So you can make this now again larger if you replace this lambda here by a lambda max. Yeah? So also define now a lambda max, which is the supremum over all lambdas. And I have now that f is less or equal lambda max divided by lambda min times g of t. So you see this here is our constant c. And we have our condition that the density of the inhomogeneous distribution function, which is here, can be estimated by lambda max divided by lambda min. So the size of this corridor, so how much does it vary, multiplied with the density of the homogeneous one. And I know how I can explicitly generate a sequence that has distribution G, yeah, inverse of the distribution function C. And you also see that if your function lambda becomes constant, yeah, lambda min, lambda max are approaching one, and actually you will approach that you are actually accepting all the points. So we are with this little C here in the situation of our little lemma. So the algorithm is now as follows. I use the uh, version where we combine it with the inverse of the distribution function. So we first generate two uniform distributed drawings, UK and VK. Then from the VK, I calculate the sequence Y. So the G distributed sequence. So my sequence Y, YK. This is some candidate now for a default time. And I do that by using the inverse of the distribution function. So the G distribution was yeah, having the lambda min as lambda parameter. So inverse of the distribution function is minus one divided by lambda min, logarithm one minus the uniform one, yeah, one minus the VK. Then I check my condition. So I plug this in now. So the condition is here formulated in the UY form. So UK is UK, less or equal F of tau K star divided by C times G, of tau k star, so tau k star, now my candidate. If this is true, then I take the point, no? so I set my tau i is my tau k star, and you 
increase the counter, the counter for your sequence, the X, XI sequence, my sequence tau i. Yeah, and of course, then you sample the next pair. Yeah? You continue and you sample the next pair for your two uniforms. As you see, this is a nice combination, the inverse of the distribution function and the acceptance rejection. Sample two uniforms, do a quick inverse of the distribution function and check the acceptance criteria. So compared to the other method, yeah, we do not need to invert here uh, the integral. Yeah, so you can use this if you cannot analytically invert this integral, or if the other method is the other method is also a bit involved. Yeah, you have to calculate these partial sums. You can create a lookup table for this. Um, yeah, but. Uh, uh, yeah, you have you have to evaluate the integral in a certain sense that you need to uh, need to know the um, you need to know the lambda max and uh, lambda lambda min and for the for the density. So, however, here you still need to evaluate the integral. Yeah, so because the integral is here inside inside the density. Yeah. So for practical applications, sometimes yeah, it's easier to use this method with the discretized version. Okay, so that was the example for the acceptance rejection method in homogeneous exponential distribution. Now I have an example, sample the normal distribution with the acceptance rejection method. And this is also a nice example. It's not relevant in, in practice because we have this very fast, very accurate inversion function, but yeah, we gain some insights and it will also motivate a little bit the weighted Monte Carlo method. And let's do that next time. So that was it for today.